how does a master work? Firstly, we have to understand that master is a bridge between form and formless. According to Sufi terminology, he is the bridge between fana and baka. Fana means when someone attains to enlightenment, the drop has merged into the ocean. Drop is no more a drop. The microcosm is lost, is no more. All the rivers, they are, when they are about to merge with the ocean, they are turbulent. And turbulent to the extent that they do not know what will happen when they dissolve into the ocean, one by one. And this creates a tremendous fear first. And when the moment the drop becomes a part of the ocean dissolves, it no more exists as a drop, the turbulence disappears, enlightenment happens. This is one shore. The other shore is then when the drop merges into the ocean, the drop may be from Ganges or Tigris or Thames or any other river. It is no more recognized as a drop of Ganges or a drop of Thames or a drop of Hudson. Then it becomes part of the whole. And as soon as the merger happens, the whole or totality lends its qualities, lends its qualities to the drop. The drop becomes ocean. The water that was of a different taste the moment it merges into the ocean and the ocean lends its quality to the drop, it is no more of the same taste. It acquires the taste of the ocean, salty. Firstly, it loses its identity. Secondly, when it loses its identity, fana is attained. And when ocean, this happens simultaneously in some, but in case of an individual, it may take time or it may happen instantaneously. Then the ocean lends its qualities to the drop and drop becomes oceanic. This is Vaka. The life of the master moves between these two shows. He exists as a form. Form has limitations. Limitations of body. Because body, as a body, it is limited presence. I am present here. I cannot be present bodily in another place. This is form. But in my formless state, I can be in many places simultaneously. As formless, the master exists as energy or as consciousness. Through the formless existence, Master imposes his consciousness on any form that is available. Thus he is available simultaneously in two places. Bodily he is one place, but in form 
As a form he exists at one place, but as formless he exists more than one place. This is known as the way of the masters. Sufi Bhaj Mohanlal used to stay in a city called Fatehpur, a small town. Every evening there used to be meditation that is that will extend until nine or ten every evening. Thereafter the people the meditation session is over, people will come, they will disperse, the people of the family they will come inside and those Seekers who have become accustomed to coming inside, they will come inside, spend the time with Sufi Shakuntala Devi and then go. One of the person, he used to massage the feet of Sufi Bhaj Mohanlal every day. So after the meditation is over, he will do his final Pray, and then he will come inside. Every day it used to happen after meditation, maybe half an hour or hour he has not come in. So my grandmother asked my mother, go and see what happened, everybody is gone. Meditation is over, why is he there? So then when she went, she saw many the white Images, people clad in white clothes. So then it became very well known that the spirits, the embodied, disembodied souls who are, have not formed a new womb, they always remain in the company of these masters, where their journey can continue, they used to come there. One day it happened along the same session, when somebody attains to that state, he becomes cosmic. Then it is not his responsibility alone, instead it is the responsibility of the entire existence to support whatever he has said. If I promise you something, existence will support it and create the situation even after hundred years that the promise will be kept. Buddha made promise to Subhuti. Subhuti asked, will there be anyone who will understand when these sutras are recited? Buddha said, Subhuti, there will always be bodhisattvas who when these sutras are recited will understand the meaning of this. This is the promise of a Buddha and existence supports it. When an enlightened master reads these sutras, it is alive in him as if the consciousness of Buddha is manifesting through him and explaining those sutras. Whether the person have read it or not, or Buddha said for the first time, even when for the first time these sutras are recited, there will be someone, there will be someone, Subhuti, who will understand their meaning. Now, when people speak on the sutras of these masters, be it Buddha, be it Krishna's Bhagavad Gita or any other, they speak at, at the level of the mind, at the level of psychology, not beyond. And the psychology of Buddhas is beyond. That time, there is this particular sutra on which I have spoken earlier on. 
यदा यदा हि धर्म से ग्लानिर्भवती भारत अभ्युत्थान धर्म से तदात्मा सृजा आई हैव टेकिंग दिस वर्ड तदात्मा सृजा तदात्मा सृजा हम इज इज एक्सप्लेन एज आई राइज फ्रॉम एज टू एज वेन यू एनालाइज ब्रेक दीज वर्ड्स ऑफ संस्कृत which is the only language which has many meanings tadatmanam srijamyam tat atmanam srijamyam tat then atman means the being srijam srijamyam means it comes from the root srijam srijam means to create then i create my being now when there is a difficult situation you have no way no clue then something descends in your consciousness from the beyond and suddenly you get an answer suddenly you get a clue you are in a situation of extreme danger and all of a sudden an awakening comes in and you get the answer clue this is what is meant by tat atmanam srijamya then atmanam srijamyam atma creates itself a consciousness creates itself so when all these masters the enlightened ones have made a promise it is fulfilled existence supports it happened once one of the disciple of sufi prajmohan lal very devoted he had said master when it is my last time i wish you are with me now this person was living in a town almost 400 miles away so fi brijmohan lal was in meditation in the evening talk was going on now existence is supporting existence existence reminded him of his promise to this person so fi brijmohan lal said to the congregation specifically one person who was also devoted mr ram gopal mahotra that was his name is no more and he closed his eyes and when he closed his eyes in his formless existence he manifested himself not the existence manifested so fi brijmohan lal at the time when ram gopal was taking his last breath and he said master you have come it was my last wish that you be here with me and then everyone in his family saw his sons wife and other children saw him there after he said today i am in a great hurry when is the time for the ceremony is the 10th day and the 13th day ceremony which is the usual day of hindus send a message thank you there after after the cremation was over the letter comes stating that on such and such date our revered father ram gopal passed away and as he always wished his master was by his side when the being was leaving the body when the letter came whoever read the letter he was surprised that 
The master was sitting in meditation that evening. How can he be there? Then this elderly person said, that time during the meditation, the master said that Ram Gopal is no more and he closed his eyes. In the form he exits there and in his formless existence he reached to that person. This is the way Master works. Then we live in different time zones. It is day here, night is there. You are sleeping. And it is very easy to communicate through the subconscious mind. And when the message is put into the subconscious mind and you have a program, suppose for instance, I send you a mail, I put it into my system and send it to you. You have a system to decode that mail and you will get the message. I am speaking, my formulas is speaking here. My form is speaking, through the form I am speaking. But through this technology, the voice is reaching you in a formless existence. And if you have tremendous love, you can create that presence around you. And that presence will surround you like an aura. Always you will feel the presence of the Master around you. This is the way Master works. This is the way he works for the entire existence beyond time and space. Even when he is no more. Hazrat Shah Bahauddin Nakshban, when he was going through his austerities, he was the 17th master of the Nakshbandi lineage. And the master, Hazrat Ibn Khali Gizdwani, who is the 11th master of the lineage, guided him through his ways and means. The master is no more, the form is no more. But you remember, formless is energy, formless is consciousness, and energy cannot be destroyed. It always exists and is there to support you. When you have mentioned to me about the incident how Lala Ji and Sufi Brihman Lal was born, I had simply remained quiet and told you that accept everything as divine will. At the moment you accept it as a divine will, the energy field begins to work. There was tremendous anxiety in you. And because of that, a particular a situation was not coming when conception can be possible. The moment you accepted it as a divine will, relaxation came. And whatever was the shortcoming, it was overcome. And you remember Sufi Brajimamullah, Shah Bahauddin Nakshban, Jalaluddin Rumi, in their form may be different, but in consciousness they are one. If Brajimamullah made a promise to you, it is not necessary that he will fulfill. The existence will fulfill it to another person. Or can existence, can fulfill it in myriad forms. Because an enlightened one has made a promise to you. And this is where when you go deeper into the Diamond Sutra, you will understand. Buddha is not mentioned speaking to Subhuti alone. 
although the form is of subhuti, but subhuti represents all those seeds who will attain to enlightenment or who will come afterwards. And his message is meant for all those. Subhati, there will never be a time when there will be, will not be a single person who when the sutras are recited for the first time will not understand. This is the way a master works. I have lived, I have worked, so I know the ways and means of the master. It happened while I was there. One of the elderly disciple of Sufi Omkarnath passed away. So his family, his son, decided that he will carry the final remains of the body, the ashes to the city where Sufi Omkarna Kanpur and that city had the river Ganges, the holy river was flowing to merge those ashes into the river. So he had the intention of coming home, bringing the pot of ashes and then with the blessing of the master he will go. But someone has told him that you cannot carry the ashes to anybody's house. First, submerge these into the river and then go. He didn't. He got an accident. He was riding the three-wheeler, the man driven, got into an accident. Somewhere his hand was fractured or something. And it was an hour where to look for the doctor or hospital or anything. All of a sudden, he had seen a person came, held him, and told him to go to this particular person, the chiropractor type, the, not the registered chiropractor in India. There are many who do this chiropractors. Go to him. But then doubt came him and things happened. He did not go. Then again the same person came and he said, I told you to go there. Why you don't listen? He went there and the man set his arm right and it was okay accepting pain. When my father Sufi Brajmohan Lal, all of them had made the arrangement to go to the hill station of Nanital. So my mother was staying with her father at that time. So they, the whole party from there went directly and my father was supposed to leave from the, his hometown for the same city. He was returning from his office, riding the bicycle there was an accident. The front part, the wheel, came out of the bicycle. Imagine, the bicycle, the person is sitting in the middle, the front wheel fell off, and he felt very strongly that someone held onto his arm and held him from falling. And there, miles away, miles and miles away, Sufi Brajmohan Lal told Shakuntala Devi that my father's pet name was Lallan Babu. Although his official name is Lakshmi Sahai. So he said, Lallan Babu had an accident, but everything went all right. So when my father was reaching to the town. These people, my grandmother specifically was coming down the hill. So she saw the first question she asked, 
mean, you are safe and secure, you didn't get hurt or anything. So then my father asked, how did you know? He said, your Pitaji, because everyone out of love used to call him, treat him with fatherly love. So he used to call him father. And he indeed the word father is represented by the word Pitaji. Your father has said that. Imagine he is in a different city, miles away. How could he assist his disciple? This is only the formless, does it? So master is form and formless both. Certain things which are not possible through the form are done through the formless. And this is why the masterhood, if I put it, the masterness or awakening or consciousness is a bridge between form and formless, between fana and baka as Sufism calls it. Then these two, form and formless, create a field of operation for the master. It becomes very easy for him to move from form to formless and from formless to form. A free movement is always there for him. And when these incidents happen in common language, we call them as miracles. In the life of Sai Baba, there are many incidents. One of his devotees used to live about two or three miles from the mosque where Shirdi Baba, Shirdi Sai used to live. And every day he will prepare food and then he will bring for the Baba. And when Baba has eaten, then he will rush back to his home and then eat. And also he had that he will he will have only one meal for the day and that too before sunset. So sometimes he will bring the meals for Baba and Baba is busy with the people. So he will wait until Baba is finished. Then he will feed him and rush back to his home to have his meals. Many times it happened the Shirdi saint is busy with the people, he is waiting and when he reaches home it is already sunset so he will miss his meals. So one day out of compassion the Shirdi Sai told him that you don't worry tomorrow I will come. So he was very happy that today the master is coming and he prepared the meals and it is lunch time the sun was at its peak. No one came, but a dog came in. Dog remained sitting in front of the door and he was waiting for the master and the dog was a bad son. So he chased the dog and he hit him also because the dog was not moving. And then when the master did not come, he rushed and he complained, Master, I was waiting for you and you did not come. So he said, I came and you hit me. Then the man realized that he hit the dog. He said, Baba, this is my ignorance. Please give me another chance. So he said, okay, tomorrow I'll come. Again, as usual, the man prepared the lunch and waited for the Baba, but he did not come. Instead of Lapa came. Lapa is the person who has the wounds on his body, different parts, specifically the hands and feet. And the pus begins to ooze with that. The flesh slowly and slowly tends to be melt away. 
and when they are first using their flies and it is a very sad scene again as usual the man didn't want to go uh, he was asking for food but this person did not give him the food because he was waiting for his master again as usual the master did not come then he rushed and he again complained he said i came but he did not give me the food he st- so first day he was waiting for the master but the master did not come the second day when he came to know the master appeared as a dog he was waiting for the either the master will come or the dog will come but the remember existence always comes to you in a new form not in an old form jesus cannot be repeated back again but the consciousness of jesus is always there and christians are waiting for the form and they are erroneous in waiting for the form of jesus to come god is creator and creator means that nothing can be repeated again it is not repetition jesus cannot be repeated buddha cannot be repeated but buddha consciousness jesus consciousness krishna consciousness is cosmic consciousness which is always there which has never vanished which never dies and never born when you are consciousness you have attained to that state then you attain to that state when you know there is no coming and going there is no birth there is no death then you are simply ocean simply cosmic you are the assertion of isha upanishad isha vasimidam sarvam that isha the consciousness is spread over the entire cosmos if you are aware of it if you flow with it you can enjoy the fruits of the consciousness and what is the fruits of the consciousness the blessings the blissfulness the harmony the oneness the light all these are the fruits of consciousness baba shedi saint said when you do not have the awareness you will always miss you do not have the vision i can go on giving you the examples the way the master rules this is a unique way the master rules master works in myriad ways we keep this morning session only up to here until next time probably when the full session is there i will speak on